We live in a material world. That material is plastic. Since its creation and mass production in the 1940s, our appetite for the petrochemical has grown exponentially. Designed to solve modernity's many challenges, we are dealing with a plastic waste time bomb. What is the true cost of our overproduction of plastics? On our environment... The plastic waste from the West is not recycled. This is unbelievable. Our people. These little green flashes, yes. these are the plastics yes. inside the placenta cells. Yes. And our future. It is the way to save the problem of plastic, create this circular economy. Will it be enough to fix the world's broken plastic system? From the moment we wake up, our lives are intertwined with plastic, so much of which is made to be used and thrown away. I want to understand what our dependency on plastics is doing. Just coming here to speak to you today and do this interview, I feel like I've been in contact with a hundred, maybe even as much as 150 bits of plastic. It's, it's so much, and I've never really considered it. How about multiplying that with 8 billion uh, people using uh, that amount of plastic every day? Maria Westerbos is the founder of the Plastic Soup Foundation, a non-profit which monitors the recycling industry and has reshaped plastic policy around the world. Well, recycling is more or less a myth that we are very comfortable with because we think that if we throw it in a trash bin, it will be recycled, because that is what is told us. But it, that's not true. We produce 500 billion kilos a year, and we throw away 40% of that within 20 minutes. Until it's really, really, really recycled, it's still trash. The term greenwashing refers to a company or industry's efforts to exaggerate or make up their environmental credentials to look good to the public. Maria and other environmental groups say this is rampant in the plastic business. For decades, corporations have known recycling doesn't work, and yet they've spent billions promoting a system that barely works. In fact, only 9% of the world's plastic is ever recycled. So I'm wasting my time. I don't want to make you sad, but 9% of everything you use every day that's not a lot, is it? Imagine where the other 91% go. What do we do with this overproduction of plastic? We ship it to not uh, developed countries. Why would we send our recycling to developing countries? Because it's too much and it's increasing. What do you think that our incinerators can deal with? But then you're... Wait a minute, you're not actually describing a recycling system, a system of use, reuse. You're, you're just describing a system of... That's broken. On the last count, 367 million metric tons of plastic recycling was generated globally. It seems there are countries that use plastic and countries that deal with it after use. Most rich countries don't have the capacity to recycle all the plastic waste they create, so some of it has to be shipped off. China used to take in over 8 million metric tons a year, but in 2018 they said no more to the world's plastic recycling, which has had massive knock-on effects globally. The East Asian Peninsula of Malaysia has since become one of the places to turn to. The Malaysian government awarded lots of licenses allowing private companies to import huge amounts of plastic recycling waste. So what happens when the world's plastic waste 
has nowhere else to go. After the influx of 2018 and 2019, 2020 and 2021, there are progressively less imports of plastic recyclable material coming into Malaysia. On paper, at least, it looks like the problem is getting better. But what's happening in reality is something that activists that I've come to contact with are asking me to come and see for myself because they say it needs to be seen to be believed. First of all, why did you want to come to this shanty town, this derelict site, this, um, I don't know how to describe it. Why did you bring me here? Because this place has been abandoned and has been littered with so much plastic rubbish from overseas. How do you know that they've been imported well, let's go and have a look here. A second generation resident of the local village Jenjaram, C.K. Lee brought me face to face with the depth of the problem. You know, take, take some you know, samples and have a look. Um, would you oh. like to put yeah. on the gloves, please? Yeah. They're so... Old, they're not. They're crumbling. In yep, they're crumbling, and and nobody cares. This is not. I mean, this isn't in English or in um, Malaysian. It's, it's not in a language that's spoken here. So it's a product of Australia. Beef. What is what is this? Northern European. Yeah. Mm, so this is also Northern European. Yeah, so. This is Austria. So this is from Denmark. Yep. Cruelty free, Australian made. Yeah, let's keep going. Shampoo, plastic containers. Yeah. And USA. Have a look. USA, have a look. Yep, it's nice and clear. As someone who recycles avidly and has done for years, um, it is extremely difficult to stand here in front of my good intentions, right? When I recycled, I didn't expect to stand in front of it like this, degrading and quite literally breaking down into my hands onto the floor and into the ecology of a foreign country. This is where the recycling circle, it's just ended. Shocking, isn't it? Mm. On the face of the industry, it is clean, it is good for the environment, it is efficient. Look at here. Look at this, look at this ugly pile of toxic waste. Who do you hold responsible for what's happening here? From the statistics, we import substantial of plastic trash from USA, from Europe and from Japan. These are developed and advanced countries. They should dispose of their own plastic waste rather than to sell it to us, being a weak and underdeveloped country, unable to process even our own waste. So please, stop sending your plastic waste to our country. And I believe you know, the, 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 the risk is, is, is very severe and, and nobody cares here because the system is not there to monitor the level of uh, pollution on the health of the residents. I was a young girl, 
We come here, we catch fish here, and we swim here. And you can grow anything here in Malaysia because we have good weather, you know, we have good soil. And this is definitely a very beautiful place. Pua Lei Peng is a chemical engineer by trade and a lifelong resident of Jenjaram village and these surrounding areas. Pua has been drawn into the fight against imported plastic material. For years, she's been meticulously documenting what she calls illegally dumped recyclable plastic. She says she lives in constant fear, having faced threatening behavior from those who profit from trashing her homeland. Where are you taking me now? I am uh, taking you to an uh, illegal dumping site. Located within a water source, surrounded by farmland and shrimp fisheries was this, an environmental disaster. Europe, certified by Eco-something Europe. So at least it's fair trade. This is one of the worst things I've, I think I have ever seen in my life. Are we standing on water? What, are we standing on water? Yes, yes. This is clearly foreign stuff. It's all foreign stuff. It's all written in English. It's all written in Australia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's terrible. It's hard to know where to stand because the trash is literally been dumped in this water body. <coughs> okay. You go, you go, you go. I mean, how, how much of a disaster image do you want me to paint here? Poir, my activist friend who has brought me here to try and understand what's going on, has had to walk off because she can't breathe because of the asthma she's developed. I'm standing on one of the waterways to a river where animals are farmed and where people live and eat and draw their water from. And I'm standing on plastic and, and waste materials and I'm floating on a river of trash. We suffer a lot from the import waste. I was not an asthma pa uh, patient and now I'm an asthma patient. A lot of my relative friends, they are attacked by the toxic film. Many people fell sick, especially many children. They fell repeating a uh, respiratory problem. And our voice to the government is ignored by months. And um, the worst thing is, oh, the way it's coming just out of control. And I know that there's still a lot of toxic remain in the land surrounding our community. There's clear evidence here that plastic waste is getting into the waterways of the local population. But where is it all ending up? It's one thing to see the evidence, and another to collect and record this into data-based analysis. That's exactly what this research team from Nottingham University, Malaysia, are doing. So, I'm, I'm a citizen scientist today. So, just scoop it up. Yep, scoop it up. Can I just pour it yeah, into the sea? Line. Got it, okay. I feel like I'm prospecting for plastic. Gosh, there's a technique here. Yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Not brilliant. Not brilliant. It's good. It's, it's good. all right. Yep. It's all right. So that's it. That's my sample. Yeah. And we've got enough and we're ready to go. OK. 
Okay, fantastic. I'll carry this. The picture the data paints is a shocking one. Of the 508 water samples they took over a year, every sample of water had plastic. The team have uncovered that the water's level of microplastics, that's plastic bits smaller than five millimeters, was extremely high. 50% of the time, that's half of the year, the river water they sampled had five billion particles per day. Around 10% of the year, there were 30 billion particles per day in the river. By comparison, Spain's Ebru River carries two billion particles into the Mediterranean Sea. But that's per year. Microplastics are seeping into everything. If they're in our drinking water, they're also in our food, and they know no border or boundary. Today's plastic pollution problem in Malaysia is tomorrow's global microplastics crisis. The world is waking up to the reality of a plastic-coated planet. I've come to Utrecht University in Holland to find out what this means for us. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm Nelva. In order to see microplastics at this level, we need to zoom in. Really zoom in. So I'll pull up an image. And this is an image of uh, this beautifully grown placenta monolayer. Um, and what we see is that these blue um, dots in here, round things, are the nucleuses of the cell. And the particles in here, the little bright dots, green dots, these are um, microplastics. Plastic particles. So these little green flashes, yes. these are the plastics yes. inside the placenta cells. Yes. Right. Dr. Hannah Dusha is a researcher at the Institute of Risk Assessment. Her team works alongside others across the EU in a race to find the effects of microplastics on us. What's this image? Uh, so this is um, also placenta cells. It's almost a single cell imaging. And these plastic particles are around one micrometer in diameter. So, so nearly, the, it's just above the size of a nanoscale. It's just above the size of a nanoscale. The nucleuses are the blue ones. They're very bright pieces in here. These are the plastics inside wow. of the placenta cells. So they're big, they're massive. They are very massive indeed, yeah. And when we saw it for the first time, we were very surprised that the placenta cells are able to engulf mm. such a huge particle because it's almost a half of the size of the placenta cell. So the big question in here is how many of these particles end up in the placenta and is this concentration enough to trigger adverse effects in the placenta cells? Everywhere researchers have looked, they've almost always found plastic. Scientists like Dr. Dusha are adding to the public knowledge, but this isn't something that any one group in society can fix. Scientists, people and industry will need to come together if we're going to find a way to defuse the plastic waste time bomb. Recycling isn't the problem. How we've been doing it is. Recycling today is not a closed system. Mechanically burning or melting plastic to break its long chains into smaller pieces of lower and lower quality. But size matters. That's the difference between mechanical recycling and one possible alternative, biological recycling. If scientists can get large bits of plastic, polymers, into plastic's more basic constituents, monomers, then you can make almost any other plastic and you can do it infinitely. A closed system of recycling for real. With keen support from the plastic industry on the campus of Michelin in France, one group of scientists think they've mastered it. 
with nature's turbo processors, enzymes. Then this part is uh, dedicated to the pretreatment of a polymer before to go to the to the reactor. Um, you're not just using PAT plastic. You're using different types of plastic. Yes, this uh, plastic is introduced in this reactor. In that reactor, powered by enzymes, this soup of plastic is turned into liquid plastic. Exactly. Uh, just to give you an example, in this 20 cubic meter reactor, it is possible to treat two tons of plastic waste. And two tons, it represents 100,000 bottles or 20,000 t-shirts. Per day? Per batch. Per batch! In your wildest dreams, <laughs> how many of these do you see being out in the world? At the industrial scale, the reactor will be largely bigger than this one. For instance, in our first industrial plant, we'll treat 50,000 tons of uh, plastic waste per year. We will have four reactors of 300 cubic meters. That's incredible. That's big. That's big, really big. What is the power of the technology here? How could you help humanity? All the people working in Carbios uh, want to save this problem of the end of life of plastic. And with this technology developed by Carbios, my hope is that plastic waste has no value and then it will end in our plants and not in nature. Is this the enzyme? Uh, yes, it is. It is the enzyme. This little thing can change the world. It's no surprise that a solution to the world's plastic waste problem mimics nature. It may be that the scientists here, using technology to biologically break down plastic, get it right. And this could be transformative at the very least, or revolutionizing at its most. But one fact remains, the plastic industry needs to change its ways to make recycling plastic better for people and the planet.